Yuf. We're going we're gonna to have to start right on time today. My guy is uh, very much a family man. Got some things to take care of, so we're going to get things just rolling. Whoever joins, joins. You're going to have to watch the replay. Whatever happens, happens. Let's go. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> Hello world, this is the venerable Steve Bayonne, founder and CEO of Skype and Development. Uh, a little background story real quick. Uh, he and I met many moons ago, uh, right after college. Uh, my brother and his cousin were very good friends, introduced us. We clicked it immediately. We were both entrepreneurial minded. This dude has run more businesses than most people will even try. Um, taught me a lot of things he and i were in business together had we were a little early on the vape thing we, we had a nice little business in uh port authority and literally right after we closed maybe a year later they blew up but we both had a, a love for real estate and now we're really uh you know passionately going after it so uh i'd like to introduce again steve bayon i'll let him tell a little about himself and what's going on Harold, my guy um today's a little crazy guys it was my daughter's birthday and uh actually more hectic you know <laughs> playing some with all the time in the world yeah you figure you got the time and you know um so it's been kind of a long day sky and development group like harold said um i'm not gonna go too far into the backstories of you know previous ventures were kind of start at real estate um so i'm based here in uh, montgomery county pennsylvania which is outside of philly uh, had the opportunity to invest in Philly um, early on when I first got out here. And it was just smoking hot. I mean, you have New York investors out there. And I mean, just still a good market. I just, you know, I where there's smoke, there's fire, and I'm, I'm far away uh, creating smoke and fire. So I chose to do some investments out in uh, Pottstown, which is Montgomery County also. Um, had three projects going on at a time up there, two, two flips and uh, one commercial hold. And then after that, I was just chasing, um, you know, cash flow. And then in these type of markets, uh, you know, you're not finding too many multifamilies that are, you know, for sale. And if they are, they're squeezing the juice out of it. Um, you know, and those multifamily plays tend to be, you know, a legacy plays, you know, things, assets that you could, you know, actually hold on to for quite a while. Um, that's when I started looking at Detroit a couple years back, you know, with Dan Gilbert moving quick and loans and, kind of following that trend and that, you know, that kind of brings us here, Harold, where, you know, I, I shot right out to Detroit. Um, didn't know anybody out there, reached out to a few people on IG, you know, toward the city, got a feel for it. I'm big intuition guy. Um, and it, it was, it, it's ready. You know, it's a, it's a prime market. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you say prime, what for you, as you evaluate properties, what, what makes it prime for you? Well, you know, my backstory, retails, you know, it's kind of, and still is my first love. So what I wanted to do in Pottstown, it just, there wasn't enough, uh, there wasn't enough property. There wasn't enough land in, in, in particular areas, um, for me to build communities. That's, that's kind of the, you know, the end goal here. It's not just to buy up real estate and hold. Um, we, we want to control the corners, but then we want to control what's on the main strips also. Um, so the commercial Absolutely. retail space is, is really big. Um, so I saw a big opening for that. A lot of, you know, Detroit's predominantly African-American and they're just underserved. You know, I'm running into people. I'm getting stats that are showing, you know, spending two zip codes away. Like they literally have to go to the next, you know, town line just to find targets and, you know, super Walmarts and things like that. So, um, you know, accessibility okay. to just basic things aren't there in those places. So, you know, the play is really to come together and do like a kind of a live workspace. Yep. Um, mini malls, indoor, you know, uh, okay. it, it, it's a, it's a plan, but what was ripe about Detroit was just the fact, you know, you, you, and nothing against anyone from Detroit. I love them to death, but that East coast hustle with that speed and, and aggression we have, um, 
thrives in a market like that. Right? Which, which I, in I most cases it does, yeah. yeah, and that's the <laughs> thing too, you know. So I'm literally out there in building departments out there. You can get there the minute it opens. Most guys won't get there till after lunchtime. So within 45 <laughs> minutes, you can run through the entire process and, and be out of there. So, they, you know, they're about they're 15 minutes behind a little bit. Again, it's nothing against them. It's, it's just, you know, we, we're, we're a different. It's just the culture. Yeah, yeah, it's just the culture. That's it. Um, okay. Okay. Um, just by the way, there was a joke that somebody just put on there. He's, they said he must have kids because he's hiding in the closet right now. So. <laughs> Man, listen, this closet. Hey, listen, this is this is so I've been since um, I'd say about nine years I've been working from home now. Um, and this closet is actually the war room also. Okay. I got, okay. I got a couple little, you know, yeah. So there's a little bit of work that goes on in here. Um, <laughs> I ain't mad at you, brother. <laughs> man, listen, this it's, is, this is where I actually come to. So there's another space in the house, but I like it here because it's my meditation in the morning. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is, this is that war room. Like when I'm in here. They know there's, don't, don't. there's a there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, gentleman just asked. Um, he bought two vacant lots out there. Um, I think you, if you heard, how do you see either new development versus single family versus multifamily? That that type of game. Yeah, I think I might have spoke to him yesterday. New development. Um, it's a little tough in some areas out there in Detroit. Just just the, the cost to build from ground up. Mm -hmm. And what you're not going to get, you're going to be setting the tone for the market. And Detroit's undervalued at this time. The, the, the entire city's undervalued. Yeah. So to take the chance on new construction where things are going for 1, 110, 115, it's tough because that's going to be your total bill at the end of the day. Um, I, wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put that in the hands of appraisers yeah. uh, right this second. But, again, there's, there's blocks out there where you can, you know, you can develop an entire, you know, city block with uh with new construction so i would go that route i wouldn't do one or two at a time i would i would probably find huge lots and just uh and, and take up at least 60 70 percent of the street with uh with new construction okay got it got it got it yeah. so uh let them know what you're working on right now what kind of projects you're doing right now so right now there's just um i have one and two under contract before this whole situation happens so there's a a seven unit flat and a flat is just a, a, a basic building that, that's U-shaped, that, that's sitting on slabs, so there's no basement. Um, all, you know, garden-style, ground-level, courtyard. So right now, I'm in my demo phase of that. That's going to be a whole project. After that, we're going, um, you know, everything is 16 units or better Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. moving forward. But, that you know, it's a good product. Um, I think I talked to Harold about possibly uh, renting it out, doing like a master lease to a... Uh, adult foster care centers that are out there or facilities. Um, so if I do pick up smaller flats, it, it'll probably be to do master leases with, um, with these facilities and nursing homes. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, break, break, break that down for those who may not know what a master lease is. So a master lease is, so if I have seven units or a 10 unit and I give it to, you know, one individual entity, a company, um, I signed a lease with them. They're in charge of every single unit there. So we negotiate one price they tend to take care of all expenses. I mean, yeah, every, all the expenses with the building and the um, and maintenance. Uh, we tend to negotiate just big capex situations like the roof and the boiler, just major stuff. Yeah. So you know, at that point, it's it's one of the easiest ways to manage a building because, again, yeah, they're do. they're in charge of managing it, right? Um, so it's less it's less maintenance uh, from that aspect, and I feel that the asset could be a value. You know, if, if if we could lock in, you know, usually longer term contracts since it's a it's a business per se. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, you know, the next play with those flats is just making them wheelchair accessible. That's another underserved community. And there's a ton of money out there for, you know, uh, for that population. So, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy that, again, and Harold knows I'm not it's not cookie cutter if we grab them we're, we're gonna we're gonna squeeze as much juice you know out of them as possible it's not just about you know you hear a guy say oh section a is the way to go yeah, it's great but there's other avenues if you look yeah um, absolutely absolutely you know well one thing i share with you guys um what steve is magnificent at is creative ways to do things so like i said it might be we might looking at section eight but you're like yo but there's this program there's this program there's that pro but that program actually pays more than section eight and he finds them and somehow, you know, finagles them, figures out the loopholes and how the city works and who the players are. 
that's his specialty. That that I you know I I take my hats off to him on the things that he can create just off kind of figuring out all right where's the gap. He's very good at finding the gap and where and where everybody like he said where there's smoke he's not running to. He creates the fire and let everybody you know see the smoke. So that that I, I salute him for. Um, go ahead. So back to the. Um the single family situation, but the kid asked, or the guy asked about the uh, the lot. So what I would do is I would build, I would build probably, I would go container build on those lots right now. Um, small, you know, 200, 300 square feet. I would do micro units on those lots right now. Coming at around 45,000 total bill, sell that to the city, stack them on top of each other. Cause there's there gonna go. be a need, there's gonna be a need for a lot of property. In the, in the affordable housing market sector right now, you know, we, we, we got killed. This, this is, this is the lane that I'm going to sit in because you figure everything from top down is going to drop a couple levels from this pandemic, you know? So guys that were in class A apartment buildings, they're probably going to drop down to a class B just to save a little bit of money. The B's are going to go to C's and then the C's, they're just, you know, there's, there's gold in the hood. So there's going to be a lot of, uh, access to uh, uh, tenants at this point. You know, the tenant pool is going to be huge for renters. Um, so, so Rudy, a container build is essentially is prefab. Uh, prefab. Essentially, is, yeah. it's already been built. Places like Pennsylvania, um, some other places in the Midwest, where they literally, when you see like those oversized loads and they're driving across the highway, um, mm-hmm. it's those type of things. But it doesn't look like a house. It literally looks like a box. But the box is a 200, 300 square foot studio apartment that is, they just put on. It's like Lego blocks essentially so yeah. that's 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 container build do you know do a google search do some research on that look at how quickly you can get those things you know put on on your um similar to modular but not exactly modular but more more prefab so it just literally they, they look like um if you ever see like a, a container ship it literally looks like those except they got apartments inside Plumbing, everything ready to go. All you got, you just got to set up the, the sewer lines and all that stuff, and boom, <laughs> you, you got you got places already. So, in places that are low low sales prices or the numbers are not that high, that's kind of the way to go because you'll save yourself a lot of cost on labor, materials, and things of that nature. Does that make yeah. sense? All right. So far, yeah. Like, so we have. Like a, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we have a we have a container play out in Vegas too. Um, it's a real good place to put those up. Mm-hmm. So you asked about single family, and you know, initially my thoughts were just to go out there and just attack the commercial end. But mm-hmm. all my commercial spots are on the corner. So when I say control the corners, you can control what goes on behind you. So you know that since changed, we're going to start grabbing the uh, the single families. Mm-hmm. Um, in essence, we're just going to self finance and then. Uh, and, and, and just be the bank and hold paper on them because we want homeowners. Um, you know, not that renters are bad, but we, we, we definitely want to bring up the, uh, the numbers with, with home ownership in Detroit. So simple model. Most of them back in the back blocks go for like, you know, anywhere between 20 and 30, put 40 in ARVs are around 90,000. Um, you know, solid investments. If you were to go that route and just, uh, and just sell them, but we'll end up we'll end up selling the paper and we can go, you know, we can set our own prices at that point um, because the financing to be creative. So we're, we're, we're going to put some we're going to put value back in those neighborhoods again. Beautiful. So yeah. now you guys, so you guys understand the people I run with, we we're not, we're not only about the money, but we're also about the community. So there's ways for us to make money, but also rebuild and rehab a whole neighborhood and make it where everybody wants to live there and, and raise the values. So it's a win-win for everybody. This, this, is, this, as you guys think about how you invest, don't be a slumlord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you know when you make the right and the left on your main blocks, you have access to you know salons, food, um, restaurants. So we're playing Monopoly, and we're playing Monopoly, guys. Come on board. Yes, yes and that's indeed. what I like about Detroit. It's just it's it's wide open, right? It's a blank canvas. Um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful city inside and out. The people are great. Um, but they're coming for the last piece of that puzzle there <laughs> and, yep. and they're going to get it. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I just want everybody to understand kind of how this world works. Right. So when he mentioned, I don't know if you guys know who Dan Gilbert is. He's the guy that owns the Cleveland Cavaliers, Quicken Loans. He owns like 90 businesses, whatever. 
he and Warren Buffett came to Detroit and bought half of downtown. Literally bought half of downtown. And they bought it for pennies on the dollar. And what they did was they put a bunch of um, startups and incubators and companies like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn in these buildings to kind of revitalize the economy in there so that it was not always dependent on manufacturing, i.e. the, the uh, auto industry. Now, here's the crazy part, folks, and I want you to pay attention. So what happened with this pandemic, there is now a, an increased tension with China. So there's going to be a demand for more made in America type stuff. These cities thrive on manufacturing as well as now technology. So you're going to pair the two together. It's just a matter of time, folks. It's just a matter of time. Like when he put me on, I was like, ooh. So I, always, I always heard about Detroit. I always knew that there was inexpensive stuff. I just didn't know how to play that game. I didn't have anybody there. But when he went there and kind of laid the land out, I was like, ooh, okay. Okay, we're going to have to take a little trip out there. You know what I mean? I mean, we but started tech, looking at some big buildings. Right, but tech and um, tech and automotive linked already. So yeah. because Detroit had the factories that were there, it only makes sense, you know, to for all the smart cars. That. Right. So now the smart cars are going to be, you know, designed in Silicon Valley and um, manufactured here in Detroit. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, so, that's, so that's, that's where... Employment people, people have paychecks and they need a place to sleep. So guess what? Hence the opportunity. All right, right. this all so, makes sense to um, everybody. Yeah, and the building now is probably eight minutes from the, uh, you know, the, the proposed expansion to uh, to one of the factories in Detroit. Four billion dollars coming that hmm. way. So again, look, you could be where the smoke's at, or you can kind of sit back <laughs> a little bit and wait. But it, you know, I, I like to sit back a little bit and wait. There's there's a lot more risk. In, in that space, um, you know, you're, 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 you you got to be patient because you see guys making money with these big flips in these areas. Uh, but you just got to be patient. It's going to come. And then, you know, I, we, we're playing a numbers game at this point. So I'm not, you know, you're only as good as your last deal. We're trying to just keep a pipeline going. Absolutely. Um, and, and we're sitting at, you know, we're, we're eating from so many ends that is, you know, we're not just developers. We, we, you know, there's, there's there's more that goes into this. Um, it's 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 a city, man, and you know I had <laughs> tours coming up too, which was which is a little crazy. Like this whole entire spring, I was just going to open up the city to to any and everybody, and um, and really show you guys the lay of the land. There's just so much, so much opportunity, so much gold, um, in Detroit, and it's a you know it's a city that's built for about four million. There's only about six hundred and some thousand people there. Yeah, there's, there's, a great, there's a great, uh, you know, uh, flee, you know, fleeing of the city, and that is opportunity there to to continue to grow. Yeah, and you know, I I get around the United States, and you 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 get, you know, they have their little fashion district, a little arts situation. The the, the food is incredible. Um, I jump on these little segways downtown. The uh, the arenas are all right there, basketball, baseball, football, all within a stone, you know, stone throw for, away from each other. So when you mentioned that Dan Gilbert brought Quicken Loans and, and started to buy up downtown, what they did was they gave those employees of the company pretty much stipends to live downtown. So they were just kind of getting credit, paying zero to no rent. They just wanted to keep them there long enough just to bring, give that city life. And that's what enticed the, uh, you know, the whole restaurants and commercial spaces. And now when you go downtown Detroit, you wouldn't even know. I mean, one of my favorite cities. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, an incredible city. And, and, and by the way, folks, another little, little tidbit, it is one of um, the hubs for United Airlines. So you got that side of the, the, I mean, I know they're hurting right now, but that you all, we all know airplanes are coming back, people are going to take flights again, all that stuff's going to be there. These are all major employers in these vicinities, and they're bringing more people as we as we go along. So, um, now there's going to be opportunities, which you know how we do. We try to bring people in. There'll be opportunities for you to invest with us in Detroit. Um, he, he's the, he's the mastermind. Like, you know, remember I told you I'm horrible with paperwork and numbers. He is phenomenal. So that part, <laughs> that part is, is well covered. I, I, I like to hit the streets. He, he's, he's, he's the, he's the brainiac, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and the play. So it, make sure you guys, if you're not following him already, follow him now. There's a lot of stuff coming out. 
he he sends out even right now for some of the people that did uh invest with him on the, in the seven flat he sends out the whole process and the whole the whole thing so you always you, remember i told you we're all about learning and earning at the same time you know what i mean so it's not it's not just for the heck of it we ain't doing this for our health we're doing this for y'all to, to to lift up be part of the game be part of the wave so I want, me and him had a conversation earlier today. I just want you guys to pay attention to something, all right? So for you, I'm in my 40s, right? Um, we've seen, um, and we were young, but when we played in our head, we had the 87 crash, market went a little crazy, real estate started to come back. Then 99 into 2000, they had the dot-com boom, then bust, right? Right after that, 9-11 hit. Slowed the market down, a lot of uncertainty, but then all of a sudden, the roaring 2000s came and everybody was making money in real estate, dentists, you name it. You didn't have to know nothing about real estate. You just bought it and they went up. Then we hit 08, 09. So we've seen how this game is played. And if you notice the numbers I just told you, they're everywhere between seven to 10 years apart. This is that wave. So do not miss it unless you want to wait till 2030 <laughs> at some point. You know what I mean? So this is opportunities that we're seeing and we, we know and because of our experience, we've watched what happens, how people come out of things, how employment plays, where is it coming, how do we move? So there's always an opportunity. Sometimes you got to pivot. Sometimes, um, like you said, we'll be very patient and just you know play the slow game. But I promise you, we're gonna win as long as it's buffing yeah. our lungs. I told you about that. So yeah. Let's see any other questions? I didn't see that flew through. Let me see. It seems like everybody's listening right now. <laughs> Which I love. That means it's good. That means we're giving them good information. And then just just to touch on, you know, kind of what's happening now, which differs from 08, you know, that was more housing crisis. This is like the housing crisis is coming. Right. But then there's there's the people crisis, yeah. you know, just just what we're going through is just humans. Um, so when you mix the two, it's, it's, it's going to they're going to pull the rug out from a lot of people right now. Um. Absolutely. Most most won't be able to recover from this. This is why I'm sticking into in, in that uh in the sector I'm in with the affordable housing. Right. Because, you know, without that, you know, can I can you go and, and, and price gouge and get money in particular areas? Yeah. But, you know, there's there's a it's a there's a bigger calling for me um, in, in going out to Detroit. And it, it, it's beyond just just adding a couple you know, extra zeros at the end. as great as those numbers are, um, we got to we got to help each other. We, we got to do a lot better, uh, you know, with each other. And um, that that's that's part of my give back, um, Absolutely. you know, and, and, and going to a city like that. So with that said, I don't know how much the housing market could be affected in Detroit. Maybe, you know, the luxury market it'll definitely see a hit first. But you, you're talking about a city that was undervalued. No one's going to pay me to take their property, right? So <laughs> the house is already ten thousand. What, what, what are you doing at this point, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so where I'm at, I don't really see too much of a. What you can get, you know, with a lot of people, and I, I spoke to a gentleman the other day, and nobody really thinks about this. You know, we, we're losing a lot of our elders right now, who are homeowners, right? So be ready to see a lot of things in probate um state sales yeah state sales and things like that so you can you can catch some deals um in in in, in that sector which is and i i hate to bring it up but it it's 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 a huge sector right now and then on top of that the the, the elders that are that actually lived through this um you know kind of like our parents we're all talking about stabilizing them in places where you know they could be looked after a little better so now you have you're going to have so many of these seniors just uprooting and leaving their homes, um, whether it's by choice or, or, or nature. So there's going to be there's there's going to be a huge market there. Um, and, you know, senior housing is, is a great space to be in. I, listen, I hope everybody writing notes down. If you're not writing these notes down, you, you're playing yourself right now. Or at least if you're going to watch the replay, you better watch You better write all this stuff down. We are giving you gold. Right now, opportunities where you don't have to play the same game as everybody else. So if you if so, I'll give an example. If you're a person who understands how to write proposals, you're really good with paperwork and, and processes. Senior housing and affordable housing is great for you because when you deal with the city, that's all it is. It's literally a bunch of paperwork 
proposing, keeping everything tight. As long as you do, they rock with you. And if you continue to do that well, they'll look for you to give you properties because they know you manage it well. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to, you know, do you need to be the, the, I own 50 units real estate person? No. You can be the person that owns 50 uh, senior homes. And senior homes, let me tell you something, that senior living, that money's serious, whether it's coming from their funds, whether it comes from Medicare and Medicaid, whether they, like somebody sells their house. You know, I, I had someone literally sold a brownstone in Brooklyn for a top dollar, moved out to PA into one of these things a little less expensive for where they want to be at. And they're, that's, I mean, that's, that's their nest egg and they're sitting there, right? So there's going to be, and right now there might be opportunities people need to move faster than, and may not be able to get that top dollar, but you may be able to help them move and do some other things. So keep, keep your mind open, keep the opportunities available to you and, and how you want to move in whatever space you feel comfortable. There's many ways to skin this cat. I'm going to show you another way to skin this cat, right? And I'm, you guys could have this one. This one's a good one. Um, Taking up so we, we're talking, we're talking, right. We're talking about senior housing, right? So part of, Part of the reason I'm in the affordable housing category in Detroit. So I'm gonna give you a prime example. Um, right now, I'm in talks to get a building that's already it, it, it's it's already uh, set up for senior housing, right? Um, completely vacant. The, the the business ran into the ground, and and so now it, there's an opportunity to get it back. What happens when you decide? to play in this sector is now I could identify most of the single family homes in a particular area that I'm in. Most of them are owned by senior citizens who can't manage the property anymore. Right. So now the senior citizens on a fixed income. Now just so you don't put your phone up a little bit. Oh, by the way. Yeah. The senior citizens. Oh, okay. no, put your phone up. Yeah, there you go. Right, there you. We go. So, we can, so we can see you. <laughs> so senior citizens on a fixed income, right? Property needs maintenance over time. Taxes are going up. What I do is, because we specialize in senior housing, we could then negotiate the sale of your house, right, for a place in our building that fits within that Social Security budget or you know whatever the retirement plan is. And at that point, we're just we're just we're just moving one person into another asset without having to force them out. I mean, these people are really losing houses over two years worth of taxes. You know, two three thousand dollars. Um. So that's kind of a that that's one of the plays we're setting up on the chessboard out there in Detroit. Um, so that way, no one's ever having to go into a, a system that's just not good for them at that point. So it's a win win. So what you don't make up in that rent when you're a hundred, two hundred dollars below market, you can make up in 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 the asset you just acquired for you know stabilizing this person. Did everyone understand that? That 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 oof, oof. I, I don't know if y'all understand what he's giving you right there. It's basically moving one money to some other money and everybody wins. Everybody wins. That's it. Um listen, room rental guys, room rental is gonna be huge right now. You know, start thinking about rooming houses. Um if you're in a market where where that's happening right now. Most guys with studios and one bedrooms, they're gonna start shacking together. Um, <laughs> pretty much. You know, we're taking it. You know, these these are cycles, right? If you're gonna follow that cycle, this is what's happening. You know, these these are things that happen during repair stages. Yep. Um, so let me let me, let me bring it back for everybody. Because a couple of people said they were not sure. So essentially, what he said was, let's say we're gonna just use these. Days. I'm I'm the I'm the older person. I have a place where I'm starting to lose control of it because my fixed income is not keeping up with the taxes and the maintenance of this home. So somebody like Steve comes in and says, look, I can move you. I can downsize you to one of our beautiful, um, you know, nice, nicely well done senior house, you know, senior homes, nice room. You got your own spot. We'll buy the house from you essentially, but you're going to sell it to us for this number. We're going to control the asset and you're going to move into here and whatever your fixed income that's what, you know, a portion of that will be for your rent and then the rest of it for you to live, whatever the case is. So how we win is we get the asset for a certain number. They may be either some equity or a sell play on that for us to win. And as a win for the for the equity for the older person, because now they're in a place where they can afford live comfortably, still be able to buy food, do whatever they need to do. 
and it's based on their budget and now they don't have to worry about losing their home because they can't continue to afford it. So it's a win-win for both parties. We win or like Steve would win because he's making some money on the equity play and they're making some money on, I mean, not making money, they're living comfortably without stressing about um, how to maintain the house. I don't know if you guys heard, they're losing their house over two to three thousand dollars worth of taxes, five thousand dollars worth of taxes. Some cases you hit the ten. That's when you hit these houses selling for ten grand, is because they got a tax lien. They can't pay it because they could either not eat or pay their housing. It doesn't make sense. So we, if you, if we could help them alleviate that pressure and still have a nice place to live on their budget, who loses? Now, does that make all sense for everybody? Yeah, so in that sense, I mean, you know, we're just going to open banks in, in Detroit because things like that shouldn't happen. So even if you if we don't have a product for to stabilize somebody and, and because what happens is the, the, their, their asset, their home becomes too much for them to, to handle. Right. But if somebody did want to stay, then, you know, we could there's fund money there where we're, we're structuring certain things to, to lend money, you know, to make sure that these type of things don't happen. Um. At that point, you can secure the house in the form of a note. Not saying that you ever want to foreclose on somebody, but come on, you know these properties have at least sixty, seventy thousand dollars worth of equity in it. There's, there's no way um, that somebody should be losing it for for that amount of money. Correct. And and this is what's happening in these markets right now. So, tons of ways to make money in real estate. Uh, you know, Harold knows I play with the Airbnbs. Also, those are those are fun. They get a little crazy. <laughs> You know, people will tell you, yeah, there's money in it, there's money in it. But the, the type of things that you go through, um, it's hilarious. And I mean, I have exterior cameras and it, it, it's, it's, it, it gets crazy. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> um, Listen, it, it, you know, and he knows my brother as well. My brother and plays that game. And I, and I give you a story real quick. One guy, he's like, yeah, I'm having, you know, I'm just bringing me and my wifey over there. And so like, same thing, he got exterior cameras and he's looking, he's watching people parading into the spot. And he's like, so he calls the dude. He's like, yo, what's going on? He's like, what? He's like, why is there like 50 people walking into into the spot? Like, you know, he's wow. using the hyperbole. And the guy's like, nah, you know, I'm just having a little, you know, a couple cats over. We have a little drinks. He said, no, 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 no. We agreed. It was you and your wifey. You know what I'm saying? Not 15, 20, 25 people. You're not right. turning up my spot. And you probably giving me a photo card anyway. People don't realize that. This everybody know. Sometimes these Airbnbs, they use fake cards. So when you try to go after them, the card no longer exists. So there, there is pros and cons to everything. And you got to know how to play the game and protect yourself, right? It's still a hustle at the end yeah. of the day. So everybody, you know, I don't want, I don't want, like, I try not to make it, I don't want anybody to think it's easy. I also don't want you to think it's impossible. There's a fine balance. Like everything else, everything in life, regard, you know, requires work. So right. yes, you can, you, like, whether you got to put a lot of work in the in the beginning so you can kind of be passive later, cool. Or is there a certain level of maintenance you got to do? Yes. But at the end of the day, if you want to live well, you got to work. Now, obviously, the better this you plan and do work in the beginning, the easier it gets later. But it still takes work, people. It still takes right. work, right? Like that's why everybody asks, why does the CEO make so much money, but they seem to work the least? It's because they put the work before. And then now they're enjoying the spoils of that. Right. Work. So any other questions for my Detroit guys that know he can't stay on too long? Like I said, his daughter's no, no, I'm, I'm here to, I mean, I'm here to rock out. They, um, okay, cool. All right, all right. A little pass. Listen, there was one more play. I don't even think I told you about this one in Pennsylvania, the, the campground. Oh no. See, this, I'm, I'm holding yeah. my notebook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, and I think it's 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 more it, it, it's going to happen anyway, but it's more promising now. The fact that everybody is um, kind of locked down. Yeah. So if you look at the Airbnb stats nationally, they've 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 been doing well. And I have a long term tenant, well, thirty day tenant. We, we we would consider that long term in the Airbnb world. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not too far from the Poconos, and they're at their occupancy is is. You know, they're booked up over there. So a ton of people from New York, New Jersey came just to retreat and, and quarantine, you know, elsewhere. So that's that people are still traveling uh, throughout Airbnb. So areas like the Poconos are, are, are pretty big now. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to develop a tiny home community. Um, 
a little further out from the Poconos, a little further north, but you know, still kind of two and a half hours from the two hours from New York, two and a half, three hours from DC, two hours, four hours from DC, about hour and forty five minutes from uh, Philly. Um, and I think that sector would be big too because this this disconnect shouldn't be something that we do because of pandemics. It should, it, I think it's going to be ingrained in us where you know um, we find places to kind of sit still. And, and be disconnected. So there's going to be a big market for, uh, and it's not just a, you know, there's, there's going to be things that go along with the community. So it's not just your typical campground. It's, it's, you come here to disconnect. Um, and, and we'll have things kind of built in for that, you know, for that weekend or that week for that guy to come up. Um, something that's probably going to be ingrained in a lot of, you know, just new culture, um, when, when we finally come out of this. So absolutely. Rudy, yes, you're going to need permits for, sewage and running electrical lines stuff like that so that i mean it's gonna be basic stuff but for the interiors it's not again it's already built it's just connecting the uh, the lines to the plumbing and and the other stuff just as this is a here's the good thing about modular bills is you're not you don't have the building department on your back like that right so on-site inspectors there's none of that with that um, it's, 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 done. it's, yeah, it's, you're, you're working off site. Some of these things are made in different States. So think about it. Inspectors aren't flying to, you know, North Carolina to go look at, a, um, you know, so from, from that standpoint, it's, 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 it's cheaper and there's just less, uh, less hands in a pot, um, when you're building Absolutely. these things out. Absolutely. So, so everybody, I want you guys to understand something. You know how they say that saying, if you're the smartest person in the room, find another room or you're the smartest person in the group, find another group. This is why I rock with somebody like this. He puts ideas that sometimes I, I don't have any, and then I'll tell him stuff. He's like, oh, shoot, I didn't think about that. So we, you know, iron sharpens iron. We, you know, we, we bring different things to the game and help each other build. And these are the kind of people that you want to, you know, um, align yourself with. So that way, either you're learning from them, they're learning from you, but it's a constant growth process. Like my man at my best just joined right now. There's things that he showed me. I didn't, you know, I, didn't, I was like, oh, okay. You know, he showed me things about Connecticut. So it's a constant growth. I, I think you guys saw, I put a post out there. I'm sometimes a teacher, always a student. Always a student. I'm always trying to learn something new. I'm always trying to learn from other people, see what other opportunities, where can I use my skill sets to best be, you know, to be successful. So, you know, his game has always been, Again, I, if I we we wouldn't have the time to tell you the, the amount of business with this man. He's a serial entrepreneur. This is an FYI. So you see, I rock with people who like to build businesses and do things, essentially. All right. Let me see. Any other questions from y'all? Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to scroll down. I missed anything. Uh, OD, my brother, I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> good friend of mine from uptown. He's actually in Miami. Uh, okay. Top real estate dog. Guy, it show you a great time in that city too. Um, <laughs> highly involved, OD. He's, he's he's got the key to the city down there. So uh, if you're next ever in Miami, time go, next, next time I go to Miami, let my let my man know. We'll, we'll make the intro. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's, he's, he's got his, there. he's got his pulse out there. Um, actually, OD's a good guy to put on. He's uh they they do the Airbnb plays out there, and I'm I'm watching these guys. They're killing it. Killing yeah, it OD, OD, if you're there, make sure hit me up so we, we can talk. As a matter of fact, I have Steve make the intro. That way you and I can talk and we'll, we'll set something up. You know? <laughs> um, someone mentioned the auction property. It's kind of a three part question. It, 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 this, it, there's so many auctions out there. Yeah. And, and just so you guys know, right now in particular, for most of the auctions, you do need cash. Most of the auctions, I say about eighty to ninety percent of them, because a lot of them now are going to be uh, municipal auctions. So whether it be the county, the state, the feds, some form of a government trying to sell this property, they don't want to. They're not waiting for financing. They want to unload the property and keep it moving. So either you have uh, some money sitting on the side, or you got somebody who got money who uh, was willing to trust you with it, or something of that fashion. Remember, I told you guys. You can, being smart about it, you can use right now for 2020, you can use your 401k or one of your retirement funds. You can pull money from it for 2020 up to 100k to um, as to use as you wish. And whether it be for real estate or whatever the case is. Now you have to pay it back in a year. And if you don't, 
you just pay back over three years and there's a couple, you know, taxes. But if you're smart about it, in a year's time, I would hope you would have flipped that money to a lot more than whatever you took out. So that's that's one opportunity. Or you can crowdfund. You can work together, get some family and friends together, work with somebody like me, my capital partner program, whatever the case is. But I don't want to hear any excuses why you're not in this game. Oh, um, highly involved. 90% of Detroit is a is an opportunity zone. FYI. <laughs> now, yeah, even, 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 even downtown. Yeah. Actually, the entire Detroit. city, even downtown. Yeah, yeah. I, I say 90% because I, just, I like to always cover myself. But I, I was pretty much thinking 100% of that city is an opportunity zone. But listen, let's, uh, the, the opportunity zone is not really for a lot of it's not for a lot of us. Yeah, I mean, you you would have to, you would have to. <laughs> that's a whole another conversation. Um, yes, if you if you have missed my conversation with Carl about opportunity zones, you'll understand. Unless you are, if you have money that you sold stock, a house, or some investment, and you need to do it, uh, uh, you need to offset the taxes or withhold the taxes for a little while. That's the only way an opportunity zone. They they're working on changing some of that, but it's not official yet. And it's, gonna, and it's probably not going to change for a while because of all this stuff. They're worried about keeping businesses alive. So they're not thinking about opportunity zone funds right now. Yeah, that, that's just all capital gains. I'm not saying no one on the line here is involved in, you know, in, 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 in that, but it's, it was for a particular sector of guys to, to, to park money. Um, yeah, it, it was essentially yeah. what they wanted was the people who had big plays, whether it be big stock sales, uh, stock options or they were selling buildings stuff like that and they needed they wanted people to invest in these other areas that need capital infusion it was an incentive for them to do so he or she you know know, um the reality is a lot of us who are starting out or in the beginning phase we're not going to be in that place now can you put money with an opportunity zone opportunity fund opportunity fund opportunity zone fund yes but again that's because you sold something that would create a taxable event, i.e. selling stocks, um, an investment property, um, you know, yeah, that's pretty much, it's pretty much the, the options in that. I'm on the east uh, side of Detroit also. Um, there was a couple of people that asked prior. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mainly on the east. Yeah, and I had, I um, yeah, on the west side also, something not too far from Dearborn. So Star City 2, can you bring a hard money loan? Yes and no. And the reason I say yes and no, it depends on the relationship you have with that lender. So let's say, for instance, you have a line of credit with them. You can you can write a check for whatever amount you, you've you won the bid on. Yes. And that's you're working it through that, that, that um, section. If you have to get the house... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, evaluated and and underwritten? No, they're not. They're not going to wait for that because they want the money at the time you won the bid. A lot of times it's the same day or within 24 hours. Period. And and most most lenders, hard money lenders, can't turn that around. But again, if you have a line of credit with them and you've done like the relationship you have with them that they they're willing to just basically you can write a check and 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 it's good, then you can win that. Or I mean, right now, we, you just heard HELOCs are starting to disappear. A lot of the bigger banks are walking away from it. Um, but if you were able to get a HELOC or you got some cash out of your house and out of the refi, those are the ways you can you can do some things. Um, I see. What, yeah, all right. I thought I lost you there for a second. No, I'm back. Um, where are we at? I see a lot of auction guys. Be careful at these auctions, right? If you're new yeah. to it, hire a lawyer, you know, um, just, just understand how they work. And I'll give you an example. So I bought some stuff from a judicial sale, which is a tax lien sale. They advertise free and clear of all encumbrances and everything. Yeah. But what they don't tell you is, you know, the particular year that you're in, those taxes are free and clear. Right. So there's, there's just little things you go through. And then on top of that, you buy the property, you have to, whatever the deposit was that day, but then you got to be back at like 245 with the rest of the cash. Same day. Same day. Same day. Now, when you go to do something with the properties now, again, this is information that wasn't out there. When you go to either sell the property, uh, you know, refi into a loan, 
Now you have a lien that's still on there from the tax lien sale after a year, year and a half. The municipality never cleared the lien up, right? So now this thing is still in court. Your money needed to be there two forty five almost a year and a half ago, right? So now there's a lien. So when you go to sell or do whatever, money has to sit in escrow. I had a good chunk of change in escrow messing with these tax lien sales. And it, it wasn't a big deal, right? But it could be something that could hold somebody. So, and then on top of that, you couldn't get, you can't get a lot of these properties insured within a year or two, All right? So you know what I ended up doing, Harold? I found a company on the West Coast that was able to insure properties, right, through their own avenue. So they basically do like quiet title and they'll give it to you yeah. before a year. So here's another business, guys, right? And I'll, I'll give you the information if you want to DM me. Um, you can go to these auctions. I can buy it because most investors don't like going to these auctions because they want the ability to just have it free and clear, you know, the way that you would normally do a transaction because they know about the back end situation. So in essence, I can go to these places, buy it under market, bring it to Harold, who's a guy that doesn't want it because he can't get title, but I can go get title insurance for $1,500, then sell it to Harold with my charge on top of it. And then you can walk away with 20,000 easy every single time. Because there's guys that just won't risk the, the, the complexities of the auctions and they'll wait or, or, or pay, you know, retail price in a sense for some of these properties. So there's a business in itself that I, I ran across by an error that I made without, fi right, without finding the information. Again, it didn't kill me. It was a good amount of money in escrow. And it actually, the money released when it was supposed to release at the end of the day. Um, so I end up meeting a company out in California that's able to do this instantly to then being able to, if I wanted to sit in that sector and turn that into a business, you know, bid 15, 20, $30,000 at these auctions, turn around, have my buyer's list of, you know, before I even leave out of there, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm selling that back, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to get that money back at two forty five. There you go. So again, it's, it's, it's all about knowing and, you know, something that just fell in my lap. Most guys, they just, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. You, you shoot yourself in the foot, right? You, you're dealing with anger. You're reacting. You're not listening. You miss these type of opportunities, right? Keeping your eye on that money. My, my eye was never on the money. Once I understood it, now I can make 10 times the amount they held in escrow for the year and a half. There you go. So if somebody I'll, wants I'll, that play I all day, I'll, I'll, that's a layup. I yeah, listen. I, I I I hope you guys. Are, um, man, I hope you guys are taking notes. Um, Zo Hefner, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. So, the ten thirty one after, if you have a ten thirty one investment, uh, investment to reinvent. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off. Okay. Um. Yeah, that was the last million dollar scheme I gave. I think I gave about ten million dollars worth of game. Um. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. Yes, with you. It was about ten million dollars yes. worth of game. Um. But just DM me if anybody wants any one of these plays or or, or wants to go more into the conversation. Just hit me on the back end and, um, you know, I, I can give you not the entire playbook, but I'll I'll lead you to water. And, you know, you got to do the rest from there. Yes, sir. Listen, I, oh, man, I hope you guys were listening to, to all this. I, I appreciate you, you Harold. Oh, always, man. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking some time. I know out of your crazy schedule with, uh, <laughs> with your daughter's birthday. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I appreciate yeah. that. Always I trust a guy that. that's in his closet, man. Always trust a guy <laughs> in his closet. <laughs> All right, I'm yes, out of sir. here, guys. You have yes, a good day. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So we got about 11 minutes left. So let me answer some questions real quick. So, Zoe, um, if you ever if you reinvest and pay yourself. So here's the thing. I, I, let me make sure everyone is clear what a 1031 is. The only one, 1030 times you can use a 1031, if you hold a property for one year or longer, an investment property for one year or longer, and you decide to sell it, you can 1031 the the um, profit, um, all the sales, the profit, into another property that's similar or bigger, right? Excuse me. So that way you can save for having to pay capital gains tax. You take the profit to go invest in one or two more properties to continue that, that growth. The only way you pay yourself in those situations is finding cash flowing properties, right? Number one, um, that you can do this. Or here's the other way to make to pay yourself. So now let's, let's use an easy example. I bought a house for 50 grand. I held it for a year, fixed it up, did a couple of different things. 
Now I've made a profit of, let's say it cost me 25 to fix. I sold it for a hundred grand. I have a 25 K profit. So what I'm going to do there, right? I'm going to go buy another property for 50 K and do the same thing over. But now, now instead of taking, let's say 50 K out of my pocket, I'm taking 25 because I just made 25. But here's the secret. After I've done this, I'm going to cash out refi these both these properties, take my equity out. I can use the equity to go do whatever I want with it. And there is no taxes on it because it is a loan. I don't have to pay taxes on the equity I pull out because it's in the form of a loan. Actually, I can write off the interest I'm paying on that loan against any taxes I do incur doing any other my other form of business. Does that make sense to you? Give me a thumbs up if you understand that. No, uh, Rude, you, there is no architecture plan. It's already created. It's literally, like I said, Lego blocks. I, I buy a container already made. They're approved. The, 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 the um, the design is already approved. I'm just stacking them on top of each other as, as high as the county will let me go. So whether it's two or three together, side by side, whatever it is, whatever the county approves, I can get done as long as I have the sewer lines and the electrical lines to, to accommodate um, the apartments or the, you know, the rooms or whatever you want to call them. I'm telling you, go on Google, you know, Google University, Google, do a, a Google search on modular homes and what the rules are. Many There's some places that won't let you use modular. Like New York, they're starting to, but it, you can only use it up to a certain height and a certain size. Um, other states are a little bit more open to it because they're a lot more rural and a lot more widespread out. So it's easier to accommodate those uh, that type of housing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just on. Um, notice what I said. I cashed out refi, cash out refi off of my investment property. And if it's an investment property, yes, I can write off the I can write off the interest. I cannot write off the interest anymore on my personal home. So if I'm in the house that I'm sitting in now, if I want to do a home equity line, I cannot write that interest is no longer a tax write off. If it is an investment property of mine, it is a business expense, the interest. It's not a personal expense anymore. I can write that off. Besides depreciation and some of the other things that you can write off for having an investment property. But, you know, we've, we've gone through that before. Maybe I'll come back to that again soon. No, Rudy, there is, it's not about the zoning. It's about the, the scale. So they might allow you to put two or three on top of each other, two or three side by side. It all depends on how they allow you to do it. Is typically, yeah, it's, it's just understanding what is allowable and then you can build to that size or you can add to that size. So when you cash out refi, is that loan considered a second mortgage uh, interest property or is it just re it's resetting it? If when you cash out refi, it's a new loan. Refinance. I'm refinancing the property. I have financing now. I don't like this financing. I want to, ref I want to redo my financing and get out of my financing A, I wanna get out of it and get financing B. It's not a second mortgage. A HELOC, a home equity line, a um, line of credit on my, on my equity is a second mortgage, is a second line. So refinancing always resets everything. So let's say um, I've been paying a loan for 10 years. I decide to redo the financing. Guess what? I'm starting from year one, even though it's a 30 year loan. So even though I started at, I already paid 10 years of one loan, I am now resetting the clock and starting all over again as an FYI. But as long as the refinance is, is into my benefit, I'll do it, i.e. taking out cash, i.e. better rate, lower payment. To me, it makes sense because all I want is the money and or the cash flow. Not necessarily. It all depends on how... So I'll give an example. Depending on what your interest rate was previously and how much you owe, um, your payment could go up or it can go down, right? 
I know people recently, you know, that's why everybody's refinancing because the rates have came down, is that they were paying four and a half, five percent, whatever it was. But because they're refinancing, the payment might go down to three hundred bucks a month, as an example, right? Two, three hundred bucks a month is a significant amount of money. That's twenty four hundred, thirty six hundred dollars a year. I keep them, you know, um, that person would keep in their pocket. I say Ivy's. I always talk about it like that. Um, let's see. The which took the money you received. Correct. Just we said that the, yep, including the money. So um as an example, but this is why as an investor you want to buy below market. I bought the house for 50 grand, right? Um I put I'll use easier number. I put 10k into it. So I'm into it for 60. The ARV is 100. There's forty thousand dollars of equity there. The banks will usually allow you to lend, borrow anywhere between seventy to eighty percent. They're a little bit tighter now, but so that, you know, so that, but let's use seventy as an easy number. Let's use seventy-five. So I can I can cash out, um, and get seventy-five percent, seventy-five thousand dollars out of the hundred k, right? So I I put in fifty. I mean, I, I bought it with 50. I put in 10. I'm at 60. I'm cash out refinancing at 75. So I'm getting 15K back. And now this is making believe there's no closing costs and all this stuff. I'm just making this for easy numbers. So I'm getting $15,000. I get like I get to go use. I'm getting my 60 back plus 15. And now I have a new mortgage. The only reason I'm doing that because I've done my math. I've done my work. It benefits me to... Um, refi to get that money back and go do another deal. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. It doesn't matter, Ruju. It depends on the interest rate. It depends on how much you're borrowing and so forth and so on. I've seen where people borrow more money, more money, right, than what they still owe and actually pay less what they're currently paying because of the way the interest rate plays out. So yes, they can try to foreclose, but they're in second position. The first lien, which is the original mortgage, will always have first dibs on um, on foreclosing. So if you owe the first loan, they'll foreclose on you. The second loan, they'll they're they're that's why a lot of people don't like to be in second position. Just so you know, just so you guys know, I started at nine o'clock on nine o one. It's two nine fifty eight. So if I see the countdown come on, I'll let you guys know. But I hope you guys get. Man, when I tell you this man dropped you so much knowledge on you, like, y'all need to watch the replay. And then I, just so you know, um, if it doesn't let me save it right now, I'm going to re-record it, and I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel as well, so that way you can watch it as many times as necessary. There is so much gold that he gave you in there. Oh, my God, the gems he gave. Uh, it's incredible. Incredible. And by the way, I hope you guys will meet me tomorrow, 8 o'clock, do a special Live, I'll be with Flipping NJ tomorrow, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Join us. We're going to talk about New York real estate, a little bit about New Jersey, and then the uh, and a little bit about everything, essentially. I'm telling you, we're doing big things. I want you to be a part of it. If you're interested in you know, my capital partner program, thank you for those who are on the line that are part of it. Um, there's a lot of great things that are coming forward. There's going to be a lot of opportunity. You're going to make money with me. You're going to... If you want to be invested, make more money, and you want to, and you want to become a partner in a deal together, all this stuff is possible. But we got to start somewhere. So if you're interested in that, email me. Uh, put Capital Partner Program in the um, subject, and you can email me from my from my profile. So I'm getting the 30 second countdown. So I appreciate everybody being here. I look forward for you guys joining us tomorrow, um, eight o'clock, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Flipping NJ uh, and I will be doing uh, a, a wonderful live again, and I hope and you're gonna learn some more. Bring your notebooks. See y'all later. Appreciate y'all.